The show you're lucky enough to see right now is one of my most requested shows. People have had great affection for this show and hoped to God they could see it again sometime. Uh, it's with the great Alfred Hitchcock. And the day we taped the show, uh, a friend of mine, Marshall Brickman, had a great idea for the opening. And I think I'll just let you see it rather than tell it to you, but it, it really worked well. We had some fun with Hitchcock. He was just a great guy, you'll pardon the expression. And when we went into commercial breaks, we would have special fun, uh, he, as he always called them, a word from our sponsor. Well, we have cut out the sponsor's words so that you can just unadulteratedly enjoy the enchanting gentleman. I should say, here's a program I think you're going to find very interesting. June 8, 1972. Alfred Hitchcock. The Dick Cavett Show! Tonight, Dick's special guest is Alfred Hitchcock. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Cavett! Good evening. <laughs> Let me explain. As you know, one of Mr. Hitchcock's trademarks is appearing in anything that he does. And since this show tonight is something that he's doing, we thought we would get that appearance uh, in right at the beginning. Uh, another of Mr. Hitchcock's trademarks is scaring the bejabers out of nearly everyone. And he's done that in so many films that it's hard to say what would be your favorite, whether it would be Cary Grant being chased across that abandoned cornfield in Kansas by the airplane in North by Northwest, or Joel McCrea watching a windmill turning in the wrong direction in Foreign Correspondent, or uh, Cary Grant bringing a glass of milk that might be poisoned to Joan Fontaine in Suspicion, or the shower scene in Psycho, or, um, or another scene from Psycho in which Martin Balsam is trying to find out why there have been so many murders and goes upstairs in that truly frightening house uh, to find out what kind of maniac might be up there. Do you remember the scene if not, here it is. Roll it. Don't watch if you have a weak stomach. It is temporarily indisposed. But we'll be back with some of his uh, cutting remarks after this word from our sponsor. 
Thank you. Here we are. Greetings, Mr. Hitchcock. How do you do? Very nice to see you. I thought that would make a very pleasant murder weapon. <laughs> the mower, I mean. <laughs> the mower? You mean we've given you an idea? No, for you your... get the victim to lie on his back. Yes. And then mow the hair off his chest first. <laughs> then stamp on him. I see. How, how did you acquire this turn of mind? Uh, you, you look like such a pussycat. Um, <laughs> I think my mother scared me when I was three months old. You, you, you see, her? she said, boo. <laughs> <laughs> it gave me the hiccups. Yes. And uh, she apparently was very satisfied. All mothers do it, you know. That's how fear starts in everyone. Well, that's an interesting insight into psychology. I didn't realize that. Um, Weren't you ever booed at by your mother? Uh, <laughs> I, I've been booed at ever since. Uh, oh. Not necessarily that way. Uh, you know, I, I was just looking over the, the incredible list of your films. Uh, this, the, the Truffaut book that delighted film people when it came out. And um, The 39 Steps and The Lady Vanishes and Notorious and The Paradine Case and Spellbound and Saboteur and Rebecca. And um, there are many that I didn't know about. Most of us know of Rope and Strangers on a Train and Rear Window and... Trouble with Harry and Psycho and Vertigo and The Wrong Man and all of those. But you made some very early films that are seldom, if ever, seen. Um, d do you have one way back there that would be Oh, yes. A there favorite? was one called The Lodger, all about Jack yeah. the Ripper. That's right. You know why he... <laughs> Somebody wants to be ripped. <laughs> In this neighborhood, they may be, but... Uh... Well, that was the case in London in the 1890s when Jack the Ripper roamed around. And, uh, well, he just took that knife out and uh, placed it abdomenically <laughs> and slit. Yes. And there were several, but there were several films about, made by, about Jack the Ripper, and, and in fact, a couple named The Lodger, but yours was in, was yours they in the They were 30s? all copies of the first one. Yeah. I made mine in 1926. 1926. When I was the boy director, which, yeah. of course, I still am now, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and one of the best boy directors we have. Are you, are you still afraid of the police? Um, Terrified of the police. Terrified. Can you explain where that begins? I think it was when I was a child of five, my father sent me with a note to the local chief of police mm -hmm. for a minor, I must admit, a minor misdemeanor. Yes. And I was placed in a cell for five minutes. Now, psychiatrists say that if you can trace the origin of your fear, it will disappear. The whole thing is a confounded lie, <laughs> because I still have it. And it's never left you from that day? Never to... left me. What sensation do you get? Do you still, if you see a police car, uh, have, get frightened? Uh... Um, I would say mild apprehension. I see. Yeah. 